Hello, and welcome to what hopefully will become a series of uh, YouTube videos on twisty puzzle math. Um, the purpose of these videos is to develop some of the basic mathematics, the, the group theory uh, surrounding permutation puzzles or twisty puzzles. Um, the videos are partially a way for me to hone some of my ideas and explore ideas I've meant to learn. And also I've noticed as a, as a void of videos on this topic. There are lots of videos on speed cuming and solutions to various puzzles, but not a lot on the mathematics. And I have a feeling that many uh, folks who, who play with these puzzles would be interested in learning a little bit of this. Um, some of the math that goes into this yields tools for you to find your own solution. When you get a new puzzle in the mail, um, it's tempting to look online for the solution, and that's fine if that's what you'd like to do. But you might be curious in developing your own solution and finding out how complete it is. So that's, that's the purpose of these videos. I am no expert. I do have an undergraduate degree in mathematics, and I'm a, a PhD student in physics. <clears throat> But this is just recreational. Um, it's, it's a hobby to me. Um, so I will be po posing questions for you to think about and questions that I have that I don't know. And I'd be interested in hearing about uh, your thoughts and, and, and whatnot in the comments. So what I want to do is just start out with some of the basics in this video and save some of the elementary group theory for follow-up videos. Um, I've taught a lot of people how to solve the cube. And one of the first things I do is take it apart. Right? So I've got a Rubik's Cube here, and I've just pried open, uh, pried off one of the edges. And uh, I'm gonna, just going to take it apart. If you've never done this before, it's kind of il uh, illustrative. It's a good way to drive home the idea that the centers are fixed, and that certain pieces um, are corners, and certain pieces are edges, and they remain that way. If you, um, so the Rubik's Cube, the center caps are, are glued on, so it's hard to get at. Um, I have a, a speed cube, I don't remember who made it, um, for those of you that would want to know. But, let's see, my cube, <laughs> if I can get my fingernails under it, you can pry off the, the centers, and you can adjust the tension, and you can dismantle it a little more elegantly um, than this one. But uh, so the Rubik's Cube, um, this is the basic mechanism. You have three perpendicular axes, and they can rotate. Notice that uh, these centers are fixed. There's no way to change the location of blue or, or yellow or orange. These things are fixed. So the center de de determines um, the color of each side. So on, on this cube uh, right here, this is the blue side, and it's always the blue side, and this is always the white side, even if these pieces aren't. The center tells you the color of the side. Also notice that some of the pieces have three colors on them, so they're corner pieces, and they're always a corner piece. And the other type of piece is uh, has two colors, and it's an edge piece. So we have corners, we have edges and we have centers, okay? And these are fixed. The centers can't move. And the corners and edges don't turn into one another. Um, so that's the mechanism of the cube. Um, so the notation we're going to use was developed by David Singmaster, who's a mathematician. And um, what he... There were many notations going around when the Rubik's Cube first came out, and this is the one that caught on. Each side is given a letter, F for front, U for up, R for right. On the other side would be L. There's a downside, and out back, there's a back. And each letter stands for a clockwise twist. Uh, 90 degrees of that side. So it would be something like that, and then like this. 
and it's clockwise when you're viewing the side. So any of those letters R, U, F, L, D, B are 90 degree clockwise turns. And then any of these with a prime um, or uh, a negative one as an exponent. So these are 90 counterclockwise. And you'll also see r squared, u squared, f squared, l squared, d squared, b squared. And these are 180 degrees. And it doesn't matter which way you go. So the goal of the cube is to restore it to its solved state. And there are many ways of doing this. Uh, many of you may already know a method um, of doing this. I'll describe several in these videos. I'm not going to tell you how to do it, though, although I want to give you the tools to discover the solution on your own. The Rubik's Cube can be solved without looking at any other solution. Um, it does help to have a few hints. I'll warn you when there's a spoiler coming, um, if the whole video is a spoiler or if it's a spoiler segment. It might seem silly in this age of the Internet to, to warn people about this sort of thing. But if you are interested in solving the cube entirely on your own, and I do encourage you to do that, then um, you don't want to get too many hints. Uh, some of the references I'll be using, this is a classic by David Sigmaster, one of the, maybe even the first publication, I think, on the Rubik's Cube. You can see the uh, pretty awesome font. But it has a lot of great material in here, and reading this you can appreciate how difficult it was forming an early solution. A later book that came out, um, co-authored with Alexander Frey, is Cubic Math. It's a, a delightful book, um, aimed, um, so it's a, it's a little more down to earth, a lot of good stuff in here. I also have the Rubik's Cube Compendium, which is kind of cute. There is a recent publication, uh, which has a lot of reprinted material, actually, from um, Sigmaster's earlier material and also the Cubic Circular, I think it was called, which was a, um, a newsletter devoted to twisty puzzles that came out in the early days of the cube, which is available online. Um, another resource, if you're interested in it, is uh, this fellow's um, page. If you just Google Japs, J-A-A-P, uh, Japs Puzzles perhaps, you'll find his website, which is uh, fantastic. Uh, he knows more than I ever will about twisty puzzles. Although, unfortunately, he doesn't really have a lot of videos on it. His videos are mostly concerned with um, other material, but his website is excellent. So that concludes the introduction of this um, video series. Uh, the next video, I'll introduce um, some of the group theory and some of the techniques for solving the puzzle.